Hello and welcome to another spectacular thing. Today I am going to look at Nextcloud. Nextcloud is an option for replacing OneDrive or Google Drive or Box or Dropbox, any of those services. And it's all on a server that you control and all the data is well within your purview, meaning it's not scraped for advertising based purposes which is really handy. We're going to look at three main steps, the installation itself, the setup, and its use. Now, installation, there are many, many ways of installing it. You can spin up an instance on DigitalOcean or Linode, or even Nextcloud hosts their own servers as well. I like to do things in my own personal um, home lab. So there's three main ways that you can do that. You can install Nextcloud on a Raspberry Pi the same way that you would install any other operating system by flashing an SD card like this. Uh, there's a virtual machine. It's VirtualBox only. It would be nice if this would be on Proxmox because Proxmox is the server that I use in my home lab. And the third way that I'm going to talk about is the main way that I would choose to install this, and that is Docker. There's an all-in-one Docker image uh, that's simple in theory. <laughs> it's simple in theory to install and use. Uh, most people want multiple apps, though, so a reverse proxy is necessary. I use traffic, and setup for me was a little bit painful. Let's, let's go through it. Now you. we're ready to install Nextcloud in Docker. This is a blank machine that I just set up. I've created a directory called Nextcloud, and in the Nextcloud directory, I've created a file called docker-compose.yml. As you can see, it's version 3.8. There's a couple of very important things here. The first is this volume. This volume here must be named Nextcloud AIO Master Container. That's important. And then down here, the container name for the Nextcloud service has to be called Nextcloud AIO Master Container with dashes instead of underscores. And then you mount the volume here to mount MNT Docker AIO config. And then I've added in this NC data volume so that the data is persistent as well. We've opened up port 8080 and 11,000. Now, the reason we have 11,000 is because we're behind a reverse proxy on this system. If you'd like a video on how I set up traffic as the reverse proxy for this, please let me know down in the comments. Now, that's it for the Docker Compose. Let's just run it. Let's run Docker Compose and see if the system comes up. <laughs> downloading all of the all of the different images that are needed for it and then it launches it, or it starts it now we want to go to https colon slash slash the machine's IP address colon 8080 it's going to complain that your connection isn't private we want to continue anyway here you can see the password for the setup utility. Save this. This is very important. Then open up the Nextcloud uh, AIO login. Use that password here and click login. Once you're on this screen, you should enter in the address that you have given the uh, Nextcloud instance. In my case, it's Nextcloud demo dot spectacularly. We click Submit, it checks quickly that it can actually access your server, and then it asks you which optional add-ons you want to add in. I'm going to select them all and save changes. We want to change the time zone that we're in. I'm in America slash Los Angeles time zone, and submit. Yes, this is a correct time zone. And now we want to click Start Containers. This will take a couple minutes. I'll fast forward so you don't have to wait through it. Okay, 
Most of the containers have started up. The last two are Nextcloud and Apache. As soon as they've started, then we can actually launch into the website. For now, let's just click the reload and it'll auto reload every few seconds until they've, they've started all the way. Now Nextcloud is up and Apache should be up next. Finally, it's all come together. <laughs> and we have our initial Nextcloud username of admin and our initial Nextcloud password of this big long string. Save this, it's very important to keep it. Now let's open our Nextcloud. And you'll see that it went through our domain. Make this bigger. Now our account name is admin and our password is that big long string that was on the previous string, uh, screen. So now we log in and we get the out of box experience. And we can start using Nextcloud. That's all there is to installing and setting up Nextcloud. Once the Raspberry Pi has started up, there isn't anything that you need to do on the CLI. The CLI will show you the IP address that you need to hit, but that's about it. Go to the IP address and select advanced because it's using a self-signed certificate and continue even though it says that it's unsafe. Let me zoom in here so we can see this a little better. Here we have our user, which is NCP, as well as our Nextcloud password. Now save these. They are different <laughs> between the uh, web interface as well as the actual application. Save both of these off so that you have access to them later. And down at the bottom, click the activate button. This will take just a minute. It's the, the equivalent of when uh, the Docker image was starting up all of its services. It's the same thing here. It's starting up all the services and setting up the databases and populating um, populating all the tables that it needs. There, it's started. Now we can log in using those credential, the first credentials on that page. And here we go. This is the next cloud first run. Click this, click to start the configuration wizard. So we'll click run. And then we're presented with the Nextcloud Pi wizard. This will help you configure your personal cloud. Go ahead and click the Nextcloud Pi icon in the center of the screen to go to USB configuration. Do you want to save Nextcloud data in a USB drive? I have a USB drive connected, so I'm going to say yes. Plug in the USB drive and hit continue. It's already plugged in, so let's just hit continue. And you can see in the bottom right that it auto-mounted the the file system for that drive. Then it says if you want to prepare the USB drive to be used with Nextcloud, hit the Format USB button. Skip if it's already formatted as ext4 or ButterFS. This will format the USB drive, so make sure there is nothing important on that drive. And I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Format USB. And then we want to move the data to the USB drive. Then it's going to ask, do you want to access Nextcloud from outside of your house? I'm going to say no, but you could say yes and get an external domain to point to your Raspberry Pi. This is just for a quick demo, so I'm not going to do this from outside my house, so I'm saying no. And the Nextcloud is ready. There are two things you can do from here. You can go to your Nextcloud or you can go back to the web panel. I'm going to go ahead and go to your Nextcloud, so click that button. And then we're presented with the login. This is the password, the second password from that first page we were on. Paste it in and log in. And then you're presented with the dashboard and the op and the Ubi. And that's it for setting it up on the Raspberry Pi. Now that you've installed Nextcloud, 
using either the Raspberry Pi or the Docker method, or even the, the Snap package that's available, you're presented with a screen that looks something like this. This is your, your admin user's homepage. Before we actually use this system though, we want to create a user account for our user, in this case, me. <laughs> Click the, to the two circles in the upper right-hand corner, scroll down to users, Click new user, give it a username. In this case, I'm gonna say Todd and a display name. Give it a password, something hard, but something that you'll remember. Uh, I'm gonna skip the email for now and then we'll give it the admin group and we'll say unlimited quota. How come that didn't work? And then add the new user. Now let's log in as our new user. To do that, we just log out of our admin account and log in. And we're at the Ubi again. Now the first thing I would let, the first thing I would do is go back into users and disable the admin account. That's all there is to that. Next, let's take a quick look around. Here we have the home screen. The home screen gives us some information. We can set a status to like do not disturb online and way invisible. This allows people to um, they can chat with us through the system if you have more than one user on the system. You can set a location for the weather. Uh, I'm not going to do that. We have recommended files. These are, these are files that show you the various kinds of files, <laughs> file types, that you can upload to the system. Uh, talk mentions. This is the chat system that I was talking about. Um, that. You can, uh, you can have multiple people on the system and you can chat with each other. It's really kind of cool. And then you have upcoming events. You can create new events. There is a calendar system on here, which we'll get to in just a minute. But you can customize this homepage with additional um, features like recent activity, recent statuses, upcoming tasks, and upcoming cards. And you can get more widgets from the App Store. Next, we can view our files on the system by clicking the files icon in the top. You can see that it populated the f a few folders, documents, photo, and talk, as well as templates, and then some files to show you what can be, what is possible to put in here. You can view photos by clicking the photos icon, and you, as again, <laughs> as is, uh, common on this, they've populated it with some photos uh, to show you what, what you can put in here. You can click on activity to see what activity has been, what you've been doing and what others have been doing. You can go to talk. You can view contacts, of which there are none yet. Um, you can just add a new contact and it'll appear here. You can view the calendar. You can add events to your calendar. You can even create new, account, new calendars. And I'm gonna call this family so that I can have a family calendar. I'm gonna change the color though, green, so that it's not the same. And you can share the calendar with family members and then they can all um, edit this as they go along. Deck and uh, tasks. So you can have a nice little task board here um, of things to do. 
I think the last thing to do is to install the apps. To do that, we go to nextcloud.com slash install. And here we have the apps. Download for desktop, the integration apps, documentation and source. And this is also where you get more information about the all-in-one Docker image, the all-in-one VM image for VirtualBox, as well as community projects that include the Snap package here. This is also where you get the NextCloud Pi, the NextCloud Pi image. But we're going to go ahead and click Download for Desktop. And you can see there's Windows, Mac, uh, Mac Legacy, and Linux. We're going to click for Windows. And I already have this installed. Once it installs, it's a, it acts the same way that OneDrive or Box or Google Drive or even uh, Dropbox acts. If you go into your folders, there's a NextCloud icon. And in here is all of the different uh, folders that you saw in files. So you've got documents, documents, photos, talk, templates, and then these demo um, images and videos and PDFs. And you just drag files in there and they'll appear here. That's all there is to it. That's Nextcloud. It's a real brief overview. If you'd like more in-depth information, uh, I encourage you to ask questions down below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, please ask them down in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, please be sure to subscribe for more, um, for more videos like this. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.